do, eating, drinking, getting married, giving their children in marriage, and not one of them except Noah realized that an absolute cataclysmic event was coming upon them. By the time they recognized what was happening, it was far too late, and that is what is happening in our age. History is moving on with a sense of normality. We are waking up and going to work and come back home with a sense of normality. And do you want to know the worst thing about normality? The worst thing about normality is that normality ushers in a false sense of security that things will always be the same. 24 hours leading up to the rapture, if the rapture happens in our lifetime, we will be living our normal lives. Now, I want to ask you a series of questions that only you can answer. What is your normal life? What is your normal life? Is your normal life a life that glorifies God? A life that you show the fruits of the Spirit? Or is your life one of unrighteousness and carnality? Is your life one that's striving for holiness? Or is your life one that is striving for pleasure? Are you faithful to God? Or do you lie and cheat and steal your way through life? When the rapture happens, people will be living their normal lives. What does your normal life consist of? Is it a life of repentance and of drawing closer to God? Or is it a life shrouded in mystery and sin? You know the most wonderful thing about the rapture is that the Bible says, quote, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, end quote. It will not be a person or an angel it will be the Lord himself. And the wonderful thing about the Lord Jesus Christ is that the Lord knows who are his. He knows those who are sheep and he knows those who are goats. Hungry for something different? Try Marie Callender's Sweet and Savory Sesame Chicken Bowl, ready in six minutes. One day, my doctor talked to me about Dupixin. Forgive me for what I'm about to say because this will be very blunt, but in all honesty, the Bible is a very blunt book. Matthew chapter 5, verses 29 through 30. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Jesus is not speaking literally. He is using a figure of speech to show you how seriously we should deal with sins in our lives. The 24 hours leading up to the rapture, there will be people who will spend the night before partying in clubs, looking to indulge themselves with the pleasures of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Twenty-four hours leading up to the rapture, there will be people who will spend the night before living double lives, lying to their wives, and going away to spend the weekend with a second family that no one knows about. Twenty-four hours leading up to the rapture, there will be people who will spend the night before living double lives, lying to their husbands, and going to meet their high school sweetheart. Twenty-four hours leading up to the rapture, there will be people who will spend their whole day gossiping and backbiting others. What is your normal life? Is your normal life one that seeks the ones who loves you? Jesus loves you and wants a relationship with you. Don't listen to some modern day preachers who attempt to paint the picture that God accepts and condones all lifestyles. He doesn't. God instructs us to be holy as He is holy. The Bible says James chapter 4 verse 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Move closer to God and he will move closer to you. God has the tendency to develop relationships with normal individuals. Normal individuals like you and me are able to draw closer to the Lord and we see this in the Bible. Individuals with no qualifications, individuals with no credentials drawing closer to God. 
we see individuals with dark histories, individuals who have committed horrendous sins, also develop a relationship with the Lord. And this can be you too. You can have a relationship with God. And the wonderful thing is, 24 hours leading up to the rapture, there will be men and women all across the world drawing closer to God. I encourage you to keep seeking the face of the Lord. It may seem like you are alone. It may seem as if you are one of the few people who are attempting to live for the Lord. 24 hours before the rapture, there will be those who will spend their days crying out to a merciful God. At this point, Jesus will fulfill his wonder promise in John 14. 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 2. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. We see how monumental this event is. There are no middlemen, lest there be corruption. There are no brokers, lest there be favoritism. Even angels are on standby at this time. Because Jesus says, I will come again. The Three Demons in the Book of Revelation In the Book of Revelation, many characters are introduced to us, some good and some who are evil. We see the Lord Jesus Christ in the Book of Revelation, which is expected because the Book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you truly want to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is, open up the Book of Revelation and the Lord Jesus Christ will be revealed to you. We see him in the book of Revelation as the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the Son of Man, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the Bridegroom, and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In the book of Revelation, we are also introduced to the seven churches. The seven churches of the book of Revelation are Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. These were important sites of early Christianity. In the book of Revelation, we are also introduced to the 144,000. These 144,000 witnesses are selected from the 12 tribes of Israel. They are sealed on their foreheads, and they are servants of the living God. In the book of Revelation, we are also introduced to the great multitude. This great multitude of people are those who are converted during the Great Tribulation. In the book of Revelation, we are also introduced to the two witnesses. The identity of the two witnesses of God is not known at present, but what we do know is that these two men are the representatives of God, and they come to witness to the world and perform miracles for three and a half years in Jerusalem. They warn the world and tell the world that all people need to repent of their sins. We are also introduced to dark characters in the book of Revelation characters that bring destruction along with them. In the book of Revelation, we are introduced to the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and they come with the beginning of sorrows spoken of in Matthew 24, verses 4 through 8. In the book of Revelation, we are also introduced to Abaddon, who is the angel of the bottomless pit. In Hebrew, the name Abaddon means place of destruction. The Greek title Apollyon literally means the destroyer. Abaddon is the leader of the demonic locusts, which will rise out of the abyss when the fifth angel blows his trumpet. In the book of Revelation, we are also introduced to the dragon, who is no one other than the devil, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, accuser of the brethren, the fallen one. In the book of Revelation, we are introduced to the beast from the sea with seven heads and ten horns. This is no one other than the Antichrist. In the book of Revelation, we are introduced to the beast from the earth, 
this is no one other than the false prophet.